And we're back. It's 93.3 KDKB Headbangers. I'm very happy to have in the studio right now, Gilby Clark. How the hell are you, dude? I'm doing good, Mike. How are you, man? Outstanding. Very happy to have you here. It's been a long time since I've seen you. In fact, I think the last time I ever saw you, other than on TV, was uh, down in Tucson. Uh-oh. <laughs> years and years and years ago. Yeah. Well, and we used uh, to always play, you know, Tucson, Phoenix, uh, right. Vegas. This was our little run, man. I, I always said that Phoenix was a great rock and roll town. It was always good to come out here and play some shows. A little, a little southwestern tour. Exactly. We used to do it all the time just to get out of town. Like I said, just play some rock and roll, and, and you definitely appreciate it. Now, what can we look forward to the show tonight? Of course, you're playing over at Club Red. Nice little venue. Um, they've, they've really been working hard at getting uh, some really killer shows there lately. They just had Lizzie Borden. They had L.A. Guns. They've oh, got uh, supposedly y and is coming up oh, in the cool. new year. Yeah, I'm really looking forward I'm to that. I'm actually doing a show with Y&T in uh, San Francisco, uh, I think in March or something. Oh, I know that's yeah. Up. That's around the time because they're going to yeah. do those California shows, and oh, then gotcha. I think they're going to there you go. bring them out here as well. And <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that because I think uh, the last time I saw them was in '86 when they took Oh wow! Cards. Well, you know what's funny is we just uh, um, what was uh, that big show we all did out in Texas, not in Rocklahoma, the uh, oh, what, the Bayou, the Bayou, the Bayou. Yeah, and uh, it, it, the uh, the turnout wasn't that good. It was a, a four day event, but what was great was everybody hanging out together. It's like, because some of us, you know, we don't always run into each other on tours and stuff, and it's so cool to see some of the guys and going, oh, what are you doing next year? I'm doing this. Why let's do a show together. So it was fun, and running into those guys was great. Yeah, a good buddy of mine played out there, Lynch. Oh, Lynch, yeah. Oh, Lynch yeah, yeah. I think part of the problem, you said the turnout kind of sucked, was wasn't there the hurricane warning or something? Hurricane warnings, and also it was a bad week, and it was uh, uh, late Labor Day that's weekend. Right, that's and right. It was, uh, you know, just with the economy it was all taking a change right then. It, it really, you know, wasn't a good time. It would have been a great event, though. I mean, they really did. The, the promoters were amazing, and all the bands had a great time. It just wasn't a very good tournament. But uh, are they going to do it again next year? Are I don't they know. Try again? I don't know. They, they, I don't even think they contacted us until like three months before. So oh, really? They'll probably let us know. But I mean, we mainly play rock and roll. You know, I mean, I. I, I played guitar for so many bands I even lose count. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no I just I always look at myself as I'm a rock and roll guitar player, you know. And s sometimes it's fashionable, sometimes it's not, you know. But you know the music that I grew up listening to, you know, which was like Led Zeppelin, you know, the Rolling Stones, Beatles, even, you know, never really goes out of style. So it's just rock and roll. I mean, I play a lot of stuff from my own records that I've made over the years, and then we play some Stones, we play some Beatles, play some David Bowie. Um, you know, we play some GNR. You know, we play a little bit of everything. You know, just it's just a rock and roll show. The guitars are loud. You know, we all sing, and it's it's fun. Now, all right, you just mentioned GNR. Got to ask you, what do you think of the new album? <laughs> and I got to tell you something. The first time I heard it in its entirety was today. Is that right? Yep. On the okay. way out here, yeah, my uh, my 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 tech McBob uh, played it for me because I've I've heard cuts and uh, you know I mean there's been leaks for years and years right. and people love handing me a, a downloaded CD of it but I never really I, I listen to just you know the, the cuts that have been released and uh, I mean it's good I mean I honestly look Axel is amazing I mean he still can write he still can sing you know it's just weird it just you know to me it just it's hard to say it sounds like Guns N' Roses. It sounds like the singer from Guns N' Roses. Yeah, it should be the Axl Rose solo. Yeah, album. I mean, I think I, uh, most people are in agreement on that. But I mean, it's it's. I think it's. It, I think it's a good record. I don't know if it's a great record. It's I, hearing it in the entirety. I, I. It was really hard to wrap my head around what what was going on. There's a lot going on. You know. You got to definitely listen to it like two or three times yeah. in its entirety because. You know, the first time I heard it, it was like, uh, and then I listened to it again, and then another song grew on me. The one I really like is uh -huh. Better. Better was uh, an uh, excellent song. Pro probably the best song on the record. Yeah. I would and Chinese say, Democracy, I really, really like that. That's too. a good rocker. I also like IRS. IRS is pretty good. Yeah, that one yeah. I've heard for a while. And the one with uh, Sebastian Bach, Sorry. Ain't is that, that which bad. one it was? Yeah. yeah. I, see, yeah. I didn't have the liner notes, so I couldn't tell. Oh, know. dude, the liner notes actually are really extensive, which is cool. It tells yeah. you who's playing what, the solo. Cause, Somebody I mean, got, got like, track. <laughs> got like 8 billion people yeah. on this thing. 15 years, 17 years in the making. Yeah. What do you think about all that, Kate? You, you know Axel. Yeah. I mean, what was he thinking with that? Well, I mean, I think if anybody that knows Axel knows what he was thinking, which he, he wasn't really thinking, he was doing, you know? I mean, that's just Axel. I mean, Axel's always been on his own time, you know? And, uh, I mean, that's probably the most rock and roll thing about him, you know, is that he just does things on his terms. I mean, unfortunately, you don't really, you're not going to have a very close family around you because, you know, I, I don't know if he's really thinking about other people's feelings and, you know, what they want, too. A, a great band 
is the right chemistry of people together contributing. And granted, you know, you hear the record, there are a lot of people contributing on that record. I mean, it's, it is a solo record in a sense, but they, people are contributing. But it's really hard to hear that unique, you know, sound of, you know, what a great guitar player and a great singer together, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, inspire each other. And, and that, that's what makes great bands today. Now let me ask you this, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure you've read or heard about how much money has been sunk in this oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> the Best Buy deal was like uh, 14 million for 1.6 million copies and it's just not selling that well. Mm -hmm. How are they going to recoup that money? He, go out, he goes out on tour. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance of the original Guns N' Roses or even <laughs> somewhat of a yeah. formation of that? What do you think of that? Uh, I mean, in my honest opinion, uh, I don't think so. I really? mean, I really don't. I mean, but reality is, I'm sure at some point, you know, I'm sure at some point, you know, exactly. Money. money, you know, everybody runs out of money at some point, you know, and times change or whatever, you never know. I just think that for some of us in the band, because I do still talk to some, uh, some of the guys in the band, and, you know, there are some things that, uh, you know, it's not about the money. Some things need to get resolved. You know that. You know I don't know if they'll get resolved in our lifetime. You really? know. It, I, I, yeah, in my opinion. Some it, serious stuff going on. There's there. some real stuff. I mean, you know it. Uh, you know everybody's on their own clock and live their lives their own way. You know and stuff. And I think that it would. Um, you know somebody's. A lot of things are going to have to change and be different for it for that to happen. I mean anything's possible. Never say it's, never. That's but what I say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's, I, I'm in a strange position because I'm kind of the second team. <laughs> you right, know, right. So, you know, if it did happen, I'm sure everybody would want to see the original band back together. You know, so, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, uh, knowing the other guys, you know, I, I don't see it really happening right now, that's for sure. Now, how long were you in? Guns I was only in the band for four years. Four years, You know, okay. but, but two and a half of it was on tour. <laughs> you know, I mean, I joined when uh, the Illusion Records just came out. And I did the, the tour. It the, was a two and a half year long tour, which was the Metallica tour. You know, all, all the Illusion things we went around the world like three times. And uh, did the Spaghetti Incident with them, live album with them, and then uh, the, the Greatest Hits was just Greatest Hits. So that's a little bit of everything we did. Right. Well, it's uh, certainly in interesting to sit here and ponder what could be. Yeah. I mean, because you could possibly be a part of it. Yeah. You never know. You never know. And that's the thing is I. You know how I feel about it. You know, like I said, there's some things that you know you would like to have a real good conversation with somebody, and, and you know, talk about stuff like that. But you know, you never know. You know, things have changed too. Most of us have families now. You know, myself, Duff, Slash, all have kids. You know, and it's like you know, your kids never got to see things like that. You know, so those are the things that come into play. It's not even so much as mo money, as much as you know. Wouldn't you know? I, I have a daughter who just started high school. God, you know, we can show her a video or talk about it, but to see it and be in it is a whole different thing. That's a really good point. You, you know, make there. That's actually those yeah. are things a lot of people do, you know that they don't think of that. You know, like some bands like the Eagles or the Police or whatever. You know that you don't think about. You know, a lot of people didn't get. There's gen generations of people that never got to see those bands. Well, you know what? Let's get to some music right now because <laughs> I am dying to hear this stuff. I haven't heard it in a while. Dug it out of my collection. We already got a request for one of your songs. All right, on jail earlier. Come so, on, yeah. let's play it. So we're gonna, but we're gonna start with "Cure Me or Kill right Me." On. This is, I think, the first song that you got radio play. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So let's do that. Anything you want to tell us about it? Well, I mean, actually, what's funny about this song is it, it is kind of an odd title, um, and it, to me, it's basically <laughs> yeah. just the blues. But uh, I it said one day we were playing a GNR show. And, uh, and I was really wrecked, and I barely could get it up, and I said to myself, I said to Duff, I go, man, somebody's got to cure me or kill me. And Duff goes, that's a great song title. And so Duff inspired me to put that title down. So uh, we'll check it out right now from Pawn Shop Guitars. This is Gilby Clark, Cure Me or Kill Me, 93.3 KDKB Headbangers Heaven. Sounds like an advertisement for Marshall Amplifiers, that song. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking about how loud you are tonight. You, of course, play in a club red. We're going to look forward to that. I will uh, scoot on over to your show oh, right cool. after here because we're done at midnight. So oh, perfect time. I'll split. In fact, if you hold off a little bit, maybe I can introduce you guys or something. Oh, I'll, I'll hold that spot. Okay, now i got something to show you. You got it. A little surprise. Come on. Out. <laughs> oh, God, come on, Mike. No, no. Why, why you do that to me? Get out of here. 
You guys can't see this. In my hand, yeah, you can't see it. So, so you're a vinyl guy. <laughs> I've got a record, actual oh vinyl. My God. Is that like your first band? That oh, of recorded? course, yeah, my first band. I was the band was called Candy. Jesus Christ. I, I look like I'm 12 in this picture. <laughs> and I was, that I was 14. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Don't you just love that? That's good. you got to sign it for me. Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? I can't believe you have this. I know. Look it's at that. Boy, Elector. What can I say? I'm a collector. Dude, you're the man. I mean, that that is rarer than rare. <laughs> Still I'm in the man. wrapper too. But I, I did I'm open it. away, man. Well, there you go. I thought I thought I'd just throw <laughs> that at you. All right. So let's talk real quick about Rockstar Supernova. Now yeah. that uh, what happened with all that because uh, it, it kind of like kind of came out and they kind of went out. Yeah. You know, uh, the reality is it, it just didn't work. You know. I mean, when we. Um, we all got into it for the right reasons, you know. I mean, we were so excited to, to just have that band, myself, Jason, and Tommy. It's like, and, you know, we got into rehearsals together. But as soon as we started doing the TV show, you know, it really became a TV show. You know, and it kind of took us out of our groove, the band groove. And the whole time we did the TV show, I kept telling the guys, don't get wrapped up in it, don't get wrapped it, it, the, the band starts when the show's over. And that's the thing is, by the time that happened, you know, Tommy was getting the Motley Crue calls, you know, and stuff, and he wasn't paying attention to what was going on. And we did do a tour. We did a full U.S. tour. We went to, uh, to uh, uh, Canada, New Zealand, uh, Australia. We had some really great shows, and we had some real crappy shows, you know. I think if we would have went out and tried to do, like, theaters, it would have been great. But, you know, Tommy was kind of in the mode of, you know, Motley Crue is back playing arenas, so if we weren't playing arenas, then it wasn't any fun, you know, and that's basically what happened. Still now, now let me ask you this, do you, after it's all said and done, mm -hmm. do you still go with your final decision of Lucas? Or, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, and everybody knows, I mean, I've told Lucas this too, you know, I actually wanted Delano, the girl. Oh, that's who I was Yeah, about. yeah, no, I, I mean, I thought she was it. I, 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 even on the very last show when Tom, Tommy was never going to change his mind from day one when he saw Lucas. You know, Is that he just, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he, as the show was going on, I mean, you know, he got into it and stuff like that. He even had a great idea of having both of them, you know, and we actually talked to him saying, would you guys both think about doing it? And they, they wouldn't do it. But the reality is we, at, at towards the end, we actually had Delana, Magni, uh, Toby, and Lucas all sing on a couple songs. Have them all, just to hear what we thought. And there was no competition. Lucas smoked all of them. Is that right? Lucas came in one take on everything. He was just, he was more like us. He was more of just kind of like a natural, you know, where the rest were, were kind of like stars in their own light. But they really just weren't right for the band, you know. And, and I don't think it was a matter of who we picked. I, I think, I, I got to I almost, bl I do, I blame us more than I blame Lucas, you know. I think if we would have came out as a hard rock band, it would have been a better fit. Well, it would have been interesting, in, in, from my perspective, if Delana had made it, because, I mean, I don't know, there's something about that chick, she just came out, I, mean, I, I yeah. think there's one time that it's kind of like, eh. Yeah, but, but she was always yeah, good. She came out and just rocked the house. Yeah. She was always but good. Lucas, I mean, he had the look, but at the same time, I always compared him to like a gremlin. No, exactly, no, 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 I, I know what you're saying, like a strike. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, a gremlin, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he wasn't rock, you know, but the problem was, was this was the biggest disagreement that Tommy and I had the whole time we were doing the show together was I did, and Jason did too, wanted it to be a rock band, where Tommy really wanted to get away from that. You know, he was listening to bands like Snow Patrol at that time. And, oh, wow. And that's where he wanted, he, in Tommy's eyes, if I want to be rock, I'm going to play in Motley. So if oh, I'm going to do so something he, else, I want like to do something else. Thing exactly. Stuff, so, he didn't okay. want to do what he was already doing. Right. But what I was trying to point out is the components of the three of us just do what we do. It would work, you know. But it didn't work. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> so what's uh, what's on in the future and uh, for now for Gilby Club? I'm just going to keep playing my guitar as loud as I can for as long as I can. <laughs> Any new records coming out? No, I've been working. Mean, you know, I'm always working on music. You know, I'm always writing. I mean, uh, what. I thought was going to be another solo record became the Supernova stuff. Oh, okay. You know, because that most of that record was was you all wrote. my yeah, it was my my stuff that we turned into Supernova songs and stuff. Uh, but um, I, you know, I'd love to get another record out. You know, and I just played Duff and I just did a show together up in Seattle. He, Duff has a great new band called Loaded, and uh, I, so he flew me up to Seattle to play uh, like four four or five songs with them. 
So we were talking about maybe doing some shows yeah. together in Europe. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Our bands go to what? Very well together. Well, let's check out yet again another track, mm -hmm. another one of my favorites off the Pawn Shop Guitars, and we actually did get a call for this particular yeah, song earlier, close. so we gotta play it. Anything you want to say about this one? Tijuana Jail, kind of self-explanatory, <laughs> but what happened to make you write this song? Well, I, I gotta tell you, I'm so glad that I wrote these words down because that weekend I didn't really remember. <laughs> but it's just a fun party song, you know, it's about the guys getting drunk and going down to Mexico and the song says the rest. We're gonna leave it at that. Alright, Tijuana Jail right here at 93.3 Katie KB Headbanger 7, it's Gilby Clark. I can't believe you have that right. You go ways back. I mean,